What up YouTube, it's IKG formerly known as No Chains and I am back with another video and this is a Minnesota Vikings Connected Franchise Mo here in Madden 25 and we are 3-0 and and this week we have the Pittsburgh Steelers who are 2-1 and pretty much middle of the pack as far as offensive and defensive rankings uh, you don't know what type of day you're going to get from this offense and defense on any given week they could go cold any given week they can get hot we're hoping that it's the former rather than the latter and um I'm going to be doing some owner stuff right here. I sped it up. I'm just going to be lowering the prices of certain stuff. The Christian Ponder jersey is very low. So I lowered that like $15. There's no reason his jersey should be that high. So I believe in a lower the prices, more people will buy stuff approach. So I lower the price to pretty much everything in the merchandise um, and jersey uh, area. And hopefully that will generate more sales. But without further ado, we're going to get into this gameplay. We're going to look at the injury report. Of course, we have Greenway and Patterson out. That's been the story for the last week or so. And then uh, the Steelers, who are practically 100% healthy outside of their uh, starter. I think Mike Adams is the only starter. Uh, Bell may be a starter at running back over Felix Jones. I'm not sure, but Felix Jones will be starting in this game. And we also have... Our second straight home game after starting the season on a road trip, we get two straight home games, so that should do good for our revenue as an owner so we could buy upgrades for the stadium, stuff like that. I believe this game was actually played in London. I'm not exactly sure. Leave a comment and let me know if you guys know. And uh, last week, we got a win versus the Browns, and we went really cold in the third and fourth quarter, so I'm going to be trying my best to remedy that in this game. So we're going to get it kicked off here in the first quarter. We received the kickoff to start the game. Jerome Simpson is back there to return. I'm not sure why he's back there instead of A.J. Jefferson. And he will get popped, and he will fumble the ball already this game. <laughs> Is starting with a turnover, and I'm not sure who that is. Number 29 thinks he's really good for forcing that fumble, but he did get his team the ball. But Desmond Bishop says, wait, 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 that's our ball. And I come up with a user pick. Uh, I really don't like user picking against the computer, but I was on him the whole time, and I read the screen, and I think I should be rewarded for that. And on second down and five, Kyle Rudolph breaks a tackle. I think that was Troy Palomalu. He broke the tackle up right there, and he picked up a first down. Then we're going to try a toss out to Adrian Peterson, and he gets around the edge and beats everybody to the edge to pick up a good amount of yards and a new set of downs right there. Second down to 10, Josh Freeman from the shotgun formation. Going to find Jerry is right, and he is just the hottest player on this offense right now. Filling in for Cordero Patterson, and he is playing very, very well. And I might mention a few statistics in this game. Adrian Peterson has not had a game without a touchdown and 100 yards. As you guys see, he picks up one right there. He hasn't had under 100 yards all season through three games. In the first game, he actually came close to breaking his own record, you know. And so we're hoping to continue that. That's why our offense is ranked 10th in the league right now. As Antonio Brown picks up his first reception, and definitely on the high seat it's our secondary they haven't been playing very well at all as you guys see Namdi Asamoa misses the tackle gets beat on coverage then you see Harrison Smith come in and get a face mask call right there through the first three games I cannot praise our front seven enough we've actually weathered the storm of a few injuries to Kevin Williams Chad Greenway but we've still been able to play effectively in the pass rush game although they haven't pass rushed effectively at times but stopping the run they've been tremendous but our secondary as you guys see they get scored on right there we just cannot cover man to man and that's just what I like to do a lot as you guys see Adrian Peterson is just a step away from breaking that one for a touchdown he already has 66 yards looking like his streak will continue and on second down and seven we're gonna float this one up to Kyle Rudolph and he's gonna take the very heavy hit from Troy Palomalu and on third down and eight they're gonna bring a blitz and look at this bad play by the cornerback and that will allow our hot wide receiver Jarius Wright to walk into the end zone for a touchdown and a crazy touchdown pass for Josh Freeman who I might add has not thrown an interception yet through three games on the season and that's just excellent I expected him to be a lot worse but I'm just going to say that I hope he can continue it going on through the season and even through this game so we'll have to see as Ben Roethlisberger will hit his receiver and he will not get his feet down and on first down and 10 after the Vikings have got the ball back Josh Freeman will take a sack by Hayward right there and on second down to 16 we're going to try to run the ball and Adrian Peterson will pick up a few good yardage right there or a few good yards I'm sorry and on the 48 yard line third down and now we're going to try a play action 
Josh Freeman can't see anybody open. They played good cover so far in this game, and he will overshoot Jerome Simpson. And the Steelers get the ball back on second down and 14. They're going to hit Antonio Brown, and we just don't have a way to stop him early in this game. He already has four receptions for 56 yards. And there's Emmanuel Sanders, the other Steelers wide receiver, gets his first reception of the day so far. And on second down and 10, they're going to go back to Antonio Brown, who is just has just been able to take complete an absolute advantage of some very poor coverage by Namdi Asamoa. It's looking like I'm going to be regretting picking him up. As you guys see, Chris Cook gets beat on the coverage for a touchdown right there. And that allows the Steelers to tie the game up right before half. So here we have A.J. Jefferson finally back out there returning a kick. And he has the outside one man to beat. And that is the kicker. And he will miss the tackle. And A.J. Jefferson makes a great play for the third week straight this guy is on his way to hawaii one way or another last week he got an interception forced fumble and then a the week before that he had a kick return so this guy is headed to hawaii if he keeps it up as you guys see he gets a kick return touchdown his second of the year in this game versus the steelers and ben rosberger back to pass with a lot of time and then finally I believe that it's Sharif Floyd and Brian Robinson will converge on him and force him to go down and take a sack and a loss of about nine yards. And on first down, after they pick up a first down, I'm sorry, to Wheaton, they're going to hit Heath Miller and he gets down to the 35-yard line. And we're just not playing good coverage. And look at this play. I mean, come on, man. Look at that play right there. And that gets them down to the 16-yard line. And they're going to run the hurry up. And I'm thinking they're going to end up letting the clock run out there, saving their last time out. And they're going to hit the old man, Plaxico Burris. And he goes out of bounds and that allows them to trim our lead from seven to four with a field goal of i believe that sean sweesome is their kicker but then they're gonna hit emmanuel sanders these corners are getting beat left and right that just eliminates my ability to blitz and rely on man to man if i do blitz i have to play coverage because this team just cannot stack up with a lot of nfl teams man to man and i'm talking about the video game if you're a vikings fan please don't get offended i'm talking about the game because you guys see that we're just getting shredded up and down the field as felix jones rumbles forward getting down to the six yard line and on first down and go they're going to hand it off to johnson and you see namdi asawan were right past this guy and that allows them to take the lead as they celebrate a touchdown and their new lead by three points and then we're going to hand it off to adrian peterson he gets popped by ryan clark and the fumble will be recovered by troy palomalu so it's looking like they're picking up a lot of momentum here in hostile territory. And on second down and eight, they're going to hit Heath and Miller. And he could have gotten to the end zone, but he will be pushed out of bounds by Harrison Smith at the three-yard line. And on first down and 10, they're going to hand it off to the bulldozer running back, Jonathan Dwyer. And he will get into the end zone. So that increases their lead to 10. So even though it's early in the third quarter, my play calling immediately shifted to comeback mode. As you guys see, Julius Wright make a beautiful catch right there. Bad play by the uh, defender right there, and that allowed Josh Freeman to complete a very risky pass. And back in the pocket, Josh Freeman is going to overshoot a covered, triple covered actually, Jerome Simpson. And on second down and four, Namdi Asamoa just gets beat again. And he will allow a touchdown by, I believe that's Emmanuel Sanders. I, I'm not even sure which one. I get Antonio Brown and Emmanuel Sanders mixed up. But the Vikings are back on the ball right now. And they get past midfield. So hopefully they can pick up a little bit of momentum and make this a game again. And as you guys see, Kyle Rudolph will get down to the 25-yard line. And we're on a roll right now. And Josh Freeman back to pass. Going to throw an interception. Trying to force it to seemingly his new favorite target in Kyle Rudolph. That would have been a third time he hit him on the drive. But instead he finds Lawrence Timmons for his first thrown interception of the season. I knew it wouldn't last forever. But again, you guys see Emmanuel Sanders abusing Namdi Asamoah. I am really questioning whether or not... I should have got him. His man-to-man -man was better than anybody on our corner, but he's still getting beat. I mean, I needed immediate help. I mean... I mean, how much time would I give this guy to get it together? He hasn't played well. He played well versus the Browns. He only allowed Josh Gordon to get one reception. But you guys see Cheryl's fresh off of the injury report will cut it back and get a touchdown. 
and he will slide into the end zone or dive into the end zone. I'm not sure why he did that, seeing as though we're down by 20 points and we've allowed 41 points by the Pittsburgh Steelers. But on third down and nine, you guys see Sanford misses the tackle, and if he makes that tackle, that gives us a chance to make it a one possession game and we get the ball back. But instead, he misses the tackle, and that would allow Antonio Brown to get another reception, and he goes over 200 yards today and look at this guy bulldoze his way through our front seven and bulldoze his way through our secondary and get a touchdown right there and even though they're up by 19 points i believe they're gonna go for two and try to make it 21 i understand that but it's one minute and 49 seconds left i don't see why they had to do that and right now the vikings are getting blown out after starting three and oh and it's late in the fourth quarter and you guys see cheryl's will get his second kickoff return touchdown. And this is where the game got a little bit wacky. You rarely ever see two special team touchdowns on the same game. But this game had three, two by Sheryls, um, and one by Jefferson. So I'm starting to question how <laughs> this works or how the still uh, not the Steelers, I'm sorry, how the sliders are. And I might just start kneeing it because I don't want to return more than one per game. Even if that, you know, one per game is still a little bit unrealistic. But um, we go ahead and we lose in front of our home field crowd, and that is just terrible. We start off 3-0. We give these fans hope. They still should have hope, but we just get dominated in the second half. And, you know, one of you guys said that I should run the ball more with Adrian Peterson. I tried to come out and do that and uh, run it. He fumbled it, so I went into comeback mode. So I'm going to have to try to somehow figure out something to do with these cornerbacks. That is definitely something that we have to fix. We allowed 49 points, people. I mean, we had two turnovers by the offense, but we allowed 49 points. By the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're good sometimes, but they're they're not a high power offense like they displayed today here in Minnesota. But we have to get something figured out. I may want to try to get a new corner or something, but luckily we have the bye week to study this film and reflect on this loss and come back strong. And the next week, I may be live streaming it or I may live commentate it. One or the other, leave a comment. Let me know which one you guys want me to do. And uh, don't forget to leave a like. I want to see this one get up to 50 likes, just like I think episode 3 had. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys then. Later.